Hi, welcome to the video lesson for Monday and Tuesday, September 20 and 21st. So to start it off, we start with our warm up. And we were really thinking about what are different substances made up of? Everything is made up of something. So what are some of the different things that pizza is made out of? Almost everyone answered the same. Dough, tomato sauce, cheese. We got a few different answers like yeast, flour, toppings. Then the second question was what substance is made up of water? Again, we almost all agreed, oxygen and hydrogen. A few students went a little bit further to say that there were two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom, which was good. And then what substances make up an iron pot? We all agreed. Iron. Some people clearly have slightly fancier iron pots at home that have more than just iron, but we could all agree that it all is based off of iron. Your asynchronous work that was assigned this day was to finish the atomic structure pogol that was started in the breakout rooms during class. So we went over our warm-ups. We all enrolled for our gizmo class or our explorerlearning.com class. You had about 10 minutes to go to our gizmo after you hopefully enrolled already to play with our first gizmo, the element builder. There was a worksheet that went with it, but I did not collect that for a grade. It was just there to help guide your practice, help guide you playing around with it. Because that gizmo might very well come in handy to help you answer the questions on your atomic structure pogol. After the gizmo, we re-went over our roles and our expectations for our breakout rooms. And we even had a new Google form to help you assign roles and reflect on the breakout room progress. And you were given a time to work in your groups on the pogol. If you go to our Canvas classroom, go to our modules. I also want to point out, I hope people have started to notice, I always list these in the order that we go through them in class. So we have our warm up. Then our very first task we did was enroll in our gizmo class. And here I have instructions. So open this up in a new tab. Go to login, enroll. If you have a username, do not log in here. What you need to do is put in your class code. So your class code that you need is here in this document, in this page. Just copy it, sorry, highlight it, right click to copy, and then paste on the Gizmo website. Once you've enrolled, once you've put the class code in, then you either have the chance to log in to your current explorelearning.com account if you made one last year, or you can register a new account. The one thing that I ask is if you are registering a new account, please make your username, your first name and your last name or your first name and your last initial. There are times when we make all task assignments that you hand in on explorerlearning.com. So having your first name and last name as your username will make it much easier for us to give you the points you deserve. Once you joined our class, you should have noticed that there's only one gizmo that's currently up for you to work on. So click on Element Builder, launch your gizmo. Sometimes you're going to need to see your element name. Usually you need to see your element symbol or the element notation. That's for part two of the activity. And you're just playing around with it. What happens as you add and remove some protons? What changes as you add and remove neutrons? and what changes as you add and remove electrons. Anytime you need to restart it and get a clean slate, just hit that undo button and it starts right back here. Now, to help you, to help guide you in how to use the gizmo was the Atom Builder Gizmo Worksheet from our module. Now, this was a zero point assignment, so it's not being collected for a grade. Here's our warm up questions that we already answered in our warm up. And then it just helps you. It helps guide you. It helps point out the things that we want you to learn from the atom building simulation. For instance, what things are in the nucleus? What things orbit the nucleus? 
changing what things, protons, neutrons, or electrons, changes the name of the element. Then here you're looking at that symbol with the notation on it. So changing what changes which of those numbers. So going through this will help you with your Pogel. If you start getting really stuck on your Pogel, come back to this worksheet, come back to this element builder simulation, and it'll help start to explain things for you. So we then re-went over our expectations for breakout rooms. Remember, whenever you're in a breakout room, it is our expectation that someone is sharing the screen. The shared screen doesn't leave your breakout room. You're not sharing the screen with your entire class. I have disabled the ability for you to show your entire desktop. So you don't have to worry about accidentally showing something that's on your desktop. All you can do is show one window at a time. So who's ever in your group with that role should be sharing it. Or if you're on a, a single breakout room, which we also had today while we were working on the gizmo, then you should definitely be showing your work. When you're in a breakout room by yourself, that's so that we teachers can walk by and kind of look over your shoulder like we would in a normal classroom. So everyone should be participating in the breakout room. If you can't be talking, if you don't have a working mic, and I know that applies for quite a few of my students, then you should be very active in the chat. Make sure you're being respectful to each other. I have nothing to add for this because so far I have not seen any disrespectful activities from my students, so I'm very happy with that. Make sure you're an active listener. Make sure you're listening to what others are saying. Question them. Clarify their, ask them clarifying questions. What they said is probably right, but maybe you don't understand it. Maybe the way they said it makes their answer sound wrong. So ask questions to clarify what did they mean by that. You need, some days, you're going to need to designate roles. Today was one of those days we had different roles to make sure each person had those tasks to complete. Make sure you're sharing. Make sure that you're able to contribute to the group. And always expect me or one of your co-teachers to pop into the breakout room at any second. Usually, we try to be quiet when we do so. We want to see you guys, catch you in the act of working together. And sometimes I'll pop in and leave without even saying a word. Usually I'll try to jump in and ask if you have any questions before I leave, but, or give you a thumbs up because I can see you guys are doing so great. But always expect us, we can be there in any moment. So our roles for today, we had reader, informed skeptic, manager, and spokesperson. So the reader is the person who reads the questions and the diagrams. It's the person who leads for the group. Now, the reader should be the person who's able to share their screen. Sometimes there are some technical difficulties and people aren't able to share their screen. So if the reader is not able to share the screen, then the informed skeptic should. The informed skeptic, you're making sure that everyone is participating. You're making sure that everyone's on the same page, that everyone agrees on the answer. Now, everyone might not all agree on the same answer. You should talk it through. If you all talk it through and you have a general agreement and everyone says the answer is two and one person says the answer is one, you say the answer is one, go with your gut. Put down what you think is the correct answer. but. If someone disagrees, make sure they have a chance to say it. Make sure there's a chance to discuss why they think the answer is one or why they think the answer is two. Make sure that dialogue takes place. That's the job of the informed skeptic. The manager, make sure everyone stays on task, monitors time. We do want you to be social. We want you guys to talk it out. But the manager is in charge to make sure that your conversations don't get too far off the rails and spokesperson. So if there's a question in the group, if you guys all realize that no one is quite sure about what this question is asking or how to answer a certain question, it's the spokesperson's job to hit that button that gets summons me or one of the other teachers to your classroom to answer a question.
anyone can really ask me questions, but if you have a question and you're waiting for me to come, the spokesperson is the one who's in charge of remembering what that question is so they can ask me when I show up. So once you decided on what roles each person was going to fulfill, in class, we had a Pogel group form. So you open this in a new tab. Everyone put down their name for what role they were participating in. And we asked you to leave this Google form open while you were in your breakout room so you could refer back to see who agreed to which task in the group. And then after class, I asked immediately after class to quickly move on to the next page, which was just a reflection. If you missed class, if you missed our Monday or Tuesday class, you don't need to go and do this. But we're probably going to be having these more regularly whenever we have breakout groups. And your atomic structure pogle is the assignment you are all working on. This is a CAMI assignment. Everyone needs to make sure they hand in their own document. And one thing I really want to stress, please, please, please don't use black text to answer your questions. When you use black text to answer your questions, it's kind of hard for us teachers to see, wait, oh, it looks like they didn't answer that question. Okay, I guess I'll take off a point. But if you use color like blue or maybe purple or maybe red, then we can easily see, oh, our students did answer all the questions. So please don't use black text. It makes it very hard for us to see that you did answer your questions. A big hint to help you out with this pogle is I would do hydrogen two before you do hydrogen one and just follow the instructions. So circle the protons so you can use the draw tool or the shape tool. Draw a circle around your proton and then draw the circle around the number that corresponds to the number of protons. This is why I think it's a little bit easier to start with hydrogen two. Cause see, I have one proton here, but I have two ones over there. So it, this trip students up, should you circle both? So should you circle both with just one big circle? I think it's easier if you start with hydrogen two. I circle my proton. I have one proton. If I come over to my nucleotide symbol, oh, hey, look, there's only one number one here. Then when I move on to part two, add the protons and neutrons together. Well, I have one proton plus one neutron, so I have two. So now I put a box around the number of the isotopic symbol and name that corresponds to protons plus neutrons. So one proton plus one neutron gave me two. So I would put a box around that too. If you're doing the draw tool, it might be kind of hard to show the difference between a box and a circle. So different colors might help or just try your best. If you were in my first or second period class, there might be a small typo right here at task two. So make sure you check the class announcements to make sure that you don't get too put off course by that typo. That's our homework. That's how we ended class. That's due at the beginning of our next class period. It's unclear right now if I'm going to be counting that towards our homework or towards our all task category. My recommendation is just treat everything like it is all task and you will never be let down. You'll never Give yourself a lower grade than what you're capable of. And that's about it. So I hope everyone's able to make good choices and stay safe until I see you again.